Okay, so we're recording. We're discussing uh, example nine of the section 7.2 notes starting on page five. So um, what's going on here? Okay, so what you usually want to do, oh great, Dallas doesn't like to work these days. I know I actually had to turn off the touch screen instead of a crack screen. That's what doesn't work. That's okay. Um, so what you typically want to do is you want to let u equal some expression. And it, it's, it might seem like a guessing game, but once you get the hang of it, it, it's not so much a guessing game. Typically, you want to let u equal the polynomial expression, the highest exponent. Now, when you have trig stuff, like we did it on the previous page, then you do have to get a little more creative. You have to use some trig identities, and you may want to let u equal the denominator. Because when you have one over u, then you know the answer to that's natural log of absolute value. So then you could use a natural log. Um, but you know, in this case, um, I'm just going to let u equal the highest exponent, which is x squared plus nine. And I'm going to let du over dx equal two uh, x. Because that's true, right? The derivative of u with respect to x is two x. And I'm going to let du equal two x times dx. Now. I was a little harsh last Friday when I was suggesting that when you do this kind of um, DX business to not isolate DX and to actually try to maybe um, be careful with putting X in the bottom. Um, and that was just more of a, you know, having good form. Well, there's a Facebook group on, for um, AP Cal. I may have mentioned this to you guys before. Um, yeah. You, you know, AP calculus teachers have nothing better to do besides keep talking about AP stuff on social media. No, but it's good. I, I do hear uh, what other people are, are saying. And there are actually some authorities who have now started doing um, use of like this. So, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, uh, fight uh, a worthless fight. So if you want to do that, that's fine. It's, uh, it, it just seems a little weird to me personally because then it's insinuating that um, x can't equal zero when x is on the bottom. But if you want to isolate dx, that's fine because apparently the people are grading are saying they're, they're cool with that. So if it makes it easy for you guys, you could do that. So um, multiply both sides by dx and then uh, divide everything that's multiplied by dx to the other side. So dx equals d over 2x. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, so when you come back over here, I'm going to kind of separate things out just a little bit. One over x squared plus nine times 18x times dx. So I haven't changed much. All I've really done is separate the fraction. So the numerator kind of push it off to the side and make that fraction of one over x squared plus nine. Same thing as 18x over x squared plus nine or one over x squared plus nine times 18x, same thing. Um, but you can just do that. So now I can make this one over u. Keep the 18x as is. The dx is d over 2x. Do we see things canceling? Absolutely, we do. Absolutely, things cancel. So, what cancels? The x's cancel, and 2 and 18 cancel. So, you get 1 and 9. So, now we have the integral of 9 over u. That's a 9 times du. That's easy to integrate. That's just 9 times natural log of u. And you got to put absolute value because you can't log negative numbers plus C. And then you uh, bring U back into the fold. Absolute value of X squared plus nine, which by the way, X squared plus nine can't be negative. So you actually could alleviate the absolute value symbol if you want, you could get rid of it, but that's okay. We'll just keep it just for consistency. And that's your final answer. If you took a derivative of that, it would get you back to the original expression in the integral. Questions? Please ask questions about me before we move on to the example three. No, we're okay. Okay, cool. By the way, if you're struggling with identifying um, anti derivatives, we remember we had this little cheat sheet right here. Um, so it's actually the reverse of the cheat sheet we had in the fall, which was this right here. 
derivative rules and uh, formulas that we would have memorized. By the way, I did find some cool documents on all the theorems that we've covered, like MVT, EVT, IVT. Um, I'll share that with you guys later this week. But, um, you know, you have all those rules there. And you can see that there is a rule for, um, we have some raising a one power or one over x, one over u, it's just the natural log. Okay, there's a question in the chat. Let's see what the question is all about before we move on to example 10. Oh, why is it absolute value? It's absolute value because you can't log negative numbers. So you have to um, ensure that you're not logging a negative number. So that's why you put absolute value. Remember uh, what a log is, in case you um, just, uh, in case you guys forgot, like let's say about log base two of eight, that's gonna be three because eight equals two cubed, right? We know this, eight equals two cubed. Um, can I do log base two of negative eight? Well, no. Negative eight can't equal two to some power. I can't multiply two, that the positive number, over and over again, make it negative. No way. It's impossible. You have to guarantee a negative um, input. That's why we put out. So very important we do that. Okay. And then if you're just um, solving for du, would you just factor out nine? Um, yes, you could. Uh, great question that Nico asked. Um, sure. Um, like du equals 2x dx. So if you wanted to, you could have done this actually. Uh, let me do this in green. So if you didn't want to do this business, you just kind of stuck with this. So you could have done this. Um, make that 9, 1 over x squared plus 9 times 2x dx. Same thing. But then 2x dx, you know, du straight up. That's actually how, you know, that, that's actually the more proper way. But nothing wrong to isolate dx, it's fine too. Um, but yes, you could do that, Nico, not a problem. Uh, another quick, good, wow, you guys have some phenomenal questions. What would happen if x ended up being equal to zero because we assume, um, it doesn't affect your math. It's, don't worry about it. Um, I mean, we just don't, it, it's just something I, I, I dissuade people from doing this, but it's fine if you do it because the AP graders are saying it's fine. Um, cause you're going to cancel it anyway. Um, so I guess as an intermediary step, we don't, it's not like a zero is going to sneak in and, oh, I'm, the zero's gonna, we're going to plug a zero in for the X. It's just, I, I guess I'm just being a little too, um, nitpicky. So don't worry about it. Okay. Example 10 is kind of weird. It looks very, very similar to example nine, but do you guys see the difference between nine and 10? Notice that 10 doesn't have an X in the numerator. Nine did. So this one's uh, more challenging, example 10, because if you let u equal this, right? Don't write this down, by the way, this is bad. If you do this and it'll have du dx equal 2x, the problem is where is that x going to cancel out? Where is that going to go? There's no other x anywhere else in the integrand. Remember, the integrand is the expression you're integrating. We call it the integrand. I don't know. So it's a little strange. Here's what we're going to do. If you remember, we had this right here, one over one plus x squared. Right now we have 18 over x squared plus nine. I can make this look like this using some sneaky algebra. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna make that 18 over x squared plus nine look like one over one plus x squared. Let me show you how. So we're gonna get a little sneakier. So what I'm going to do, for example, 10, is push the 18 off to the side, so I don't worry about it. And I'm going to write this as um, x squared plus 3 squared. Actually, let me take that back. Um, let me backtrack a little bit. x squared plus nine. Let's do that first. What I'm going to do next is going to seem a little weird. I'm going to multiply this by one ninth and multiply this by one ninth. If I do that, 
Here's what happens. And it's fair treatment. You're multiplying top and bottom of a fraction by the same number. It's totally fair treatment. You don't have to change the value of anything. So you have one ninth up top. And down below, you got to distribute. You have x squared over nine. And you have plus one, right? Because nine times one ninth is one. Now, the one ninth is gonna join the 18. So this one ninth is gonna join this guy over here, which you can do, it's a constant, not a problem. We talked about that. You could totally pull a constant off to the left. So you have 18 times one ninth times, okay, then the top becomes one. And I'm gonna write this as x over three squared. Oh, by the way, there's a dx, <laughs> my bad. Don't forget that dx, it, it didn't disappear. Okay, x squared over nine is x over three squared. Same thing, right? It's the same thing. If you square x over three, you got x squared over nine. Now, you can see how I'm getting a little sneaky here. Let u equal x over three. So d or dx equals one third. If you cross multiply, three du equals dx. Interesting. Let me stop here. Question so far about what I've done. So it requires a little bit of brain surgery. So again, I have 18 I pushed off to the left. And then I, the reason why I multiply top and bottom by one ninth is to make this number one. Because when I make that a one, then I can use this rule right here, the derivative inverse tan, which is one over one plus x squared. Okay. So now let's, let, 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 let the fun begin. Let's do the substitution. So 18 over nine is two times the integral of one over u squared, because u is x over three, u squared plus one, and your dx is three du times three du. Well, two times three is six. The integral of one over u squared plus one times du. And I'm actually gonna pull up my solution key <laughs> because I wanna make sure I haven't messed anything up. I'm pretty sure I've done this correctly, but you never know. Sometimes we make mistakes. Hold on, wrong Dropbox folder. No, that was the right place. Here we go. Okay, good. So now that's inverse tan. That's six times inverse tan of u plus c. And u, we know is x over three. So six times inverse tan of x over three plus c, and that's your final answer. Feel free to take the derivative of that. If you do it correctly and do the chain rule correctly and don't mess up your fractions, you will get 18 over x squared plus nine. You will get the same thing. Um, so that's, that's that one. So again, you have to be a little um, creative here and you have to recognize the fact that you're gonna be using the derivative of inverse tan to help you out here. So that's number, that's example there. Any questions? No, okay. Yeah, th this, I would say this is probably the, as, the as most challenging as it will get. We, you can make these really, really challenging if you wanted to. And there's actually another technique called um, um, uh, integration by parts which um, I don't know why it got removed from the um, AP. I remember doing that when I was in high school and I definitely had college. Uh, we covered non-AP course, I don't know, but I won't cover it with you guys because uh, we not like we have all the time in the world. Um, but it's still yet another, there's, there's lots of other techniques, but, um, and they get pretty, <laughs> pretty advanced. 
but this is as, as advanced as we'll make it for this course and for the AP exam. Okay, now, what if you had to do a U sub with a definite integral, however? So the one thing you have to keep in mind is that if you use substitution when doing this with definite integrals, you must change the limits of integration. I'm gonna explain what I mean by that in just a, just a minute. You must do that. Okay. Well, first off, let's figure out what we're gonna let u equal. Um, so this is tangent x secant squared x. Um, I'll probably let u equal tangent x. Because if I do that, then my derivative will be secant squared x, right? And if you divide both sides by, sorry, multiply both sides by dx, And then if you like, you could isolate dx, which is du over secant squared x. Okay, so now let's look at this integral here. You have the integral of tan x, which is u, times secant squared x, and dx is du over secant squared x, and the secant squared x is will cancel. That's the whole point. These will cancel. However, I didn't put my limits in yet. Now this I will nail you on, and everyone would agree with me, <laughs> anyone who teaches this course. Um, if you just put the same limits, that's a problem. You cannot put the same limits you had here because you're not integrating with x anymore, you're integrating with u. What did u equal? 10x. So what you need to do off to the side, when x equals pi over 6, what's u going to equal? The tangent of pi over 6. If, if you use your unit circle, I believe that is going to be, is it sine or cosine? Is one half. It's a root 3 over 3. That's root 3 over 3. That's just unit circle stuff. When x equals pi over three, then u is going to equal the tangent of pi over three. Because remember, u was tangent x. The tangent of pi over three is root three. So that is what you have to put as your limits of integration. The new upper limits root three. The new lower limits root three over three. So that's what you're integrating. You're integrating from root three over three to root three of u du. So you have to change those limits. You would lose points if you don't, because it's it's incorrect then. As in, you know, that that for sure you'll get nailed on. Um, so please don't be lazy. Just like with limits, we had to always write the limit notation, so you have to be proper here. Uh, that, that it would be fundamentally wrong if you didn't change the limits. Now, integrate that. We know it's u squared over 2 plus c. And of course, you got root 3 over 3 and root 3. The c's are going to cancel, so don't worry about it, right? Now, if you so like, you could put the x, the, uh, the tan x back in. If you want, you could do this. Um, don't write this down because I'm, I'm not going to do it this way, but I'm just going to just show you that if, if you want, you can now say that all this. So great. Let's put tan, let's replace x with tan x. Okay, go ahead. Over 2 plus c. But then you got to change those limits back to the way they were before. Pi over 6 and pi over 3. And then you plug in pi over 3, and you plug in pi over 6, and then you get your answer. That's, that's the way I did it when I was in high school. I don't know why I did it that way. I just felt like doing it that way. In college, I think I did it too that way. Um, but 
That's not necessary, actually. Because now that you already have integrated this and you have this in terms of you, just finish it off in terms of you. Because you remember, a definite integral is an ant is a number, right? Not an expression. Yes, we had to give the answer in terms of x for the previous examples because those are those are indefinite integrals. We had to give an expression as an an answer. Here, I just want a number. So um, now I'm just going to plug in root three. That's over two minus, and I got to plug in root three over three. And don't worry about the plus c's because they cancel. If you do this correctly, you should get three halves minus, um, oh goodness, that's three ninths over two, which I think would be one six. So three halves minus one six. So you get nine six minus one six, which is eight six, which is four thirds. So the answer will be four thirds. By the way, you could check your answers using the TI-84 calculator. We've done definite intervals in the calculator. Make sure you're in radian mode, of course. Make sure you put, um, when you do seek and you do one over cosine, you square it. You can totally do it in the calculator if you want to see if you got that right. You should get 1.333 repeating. Uh, but that's the answer for that one. Um, so again, be, just be very mindful about changing those limits of integration. And after you do the U sub and you integrate, just plug in straight up. You don't need to go back and plug at, uh, whatever U was equaling to, like tangent X. You don't have to have in terms of X anymore. It's not necessary. So it should be four thirds, that one. Let's try this one more time. Then we'll wrap up uh, the seven two notes, start seven four. I'm here, I'm gonna let you equal X squared minus five. And actually I'm gonna let you guys do it. So let's get, get, get figure out DU DX is, do your substitution. You will need to change the limits of integration. So when X equals zero, U is gonna equal zero squared minus five or negative five. When X equals one, U is gonna equal one squared minus five, which of course is negative four. So that's gonna be your new limits of integration, negative five and negative four. So go ahead and do the rest of it. I'll give you guys about two or three minutes. If someone has an answer, please share in the chat. Um, and then we'll move on to seven four. So if someone has an answer, please share.
here, I see negative 0 0.025 or negative 1 8. Let's see, I don't know. Uh, sounds okay to me, but we'll find out. <laughs> uh, so derivative x squared minus five, of course, is two x. If you move things around, du equals two x dx. If you isolate dx, dx is du over two x. Okay, and we already changed the limits of integration. So now you have one over u times x, and remember dx is d over 2x. So 2x is cancel. Make sure you cancel it right away because now we're doing it in terms of u. Um, and don't change the limits of integration until after you've substituted for u n. So I erase substitute, replace x squared minus 5, x dx, I move the x off to the right, dx is of course du, tx, du over 2x, x is cancel. Um, keep moving here. So you got negative five, negative four, and the two I can push off to the left, so it becomes one half times one over u du. And actually, I don't know why I put a times there, it makes no sense. But there's a times here. That's one over u du. Um, now I can integrate this. So I have one half times, and then I'll probably just put this in brackets here. That's natural log of u, absolute value, mind you, from negative five to negative four. Um, you should put, I mean, I, you know, there is a plus C, but it's gonna cancel anyway. So it's not really necessary. So you get one half times the natural log of four minus the natural log of five. And actually you can leave your answer like that. That's totally okay. You don't have to go any further than that. The college will accept that. Uh, natural log, let me see. If, um, because someone shared an answer that was negative 0.025. Let's see if that makes sense. Uh, I did not get that. Um, I got negative 0.112, if you guys a decimal. Let me actually plug in the original expression to make sure I've done things correctly. Zero, one, that's gonna be x over x squared minus five. Five. Yeah, so that's, that's what we should be getting. You can have as your answer. So hopefully we are A-OK -okay there. Okay, so I think we're down with these nuts. Any questions? No, nope. okay. So let me um, stop the recording.